If you're like me, then chances are you've seen a fantastic render that has a gold foil texture. But when you open up Blender and get to work, you begin to realize it isn't that easy to create a realistic gold texture for products. No matter what texture you use, what roughness value, or what light you place into the scene, you just get a result that looks, well, unrealistic. In this video, I'll go through how to set up a gold texture for a label and show you why the texture doesn't matter as much as you think. So you've cracked open Blender and sat down to watch your 50th YouTube tutorial. By now you're slowly getting the hang of the software, but you still feel like it takes you forever to create anything. One, you can't remember all the shortcuts they used in their video. And two, you don't know the shortcut at all. So instead you go through the menus looking for the tool. We understand the frustration, so we've created a keyboard hotkey cheat sheet to help you find those pesky shortcuts for that tool you've stopped using. Find all the shortcuts within one document. Use the chapters to navigate quickly. Highlight the hotkeys best for your workflow so you can find them easily. It's time for less searching through menus and more mashing keys on your keyboard. Download our Blender hotkey cheat sheet for free at interactive.studio slash hotkey or by clicking the link in the description. Now let's open up Blender and get creating. So first of all, we'll start by setting up the gold texture. So this is looking quite complicated at the moment. There's a fair bit going on here and it's not that organized and nodes can be a little bit confusing. However, if you set up a two color, so we've just got the label and the gold, what I'm going to do is duplicate this here. So we've got a second version of it and I'm just going to plug that straight into there. So what I've done is removed everything else. I've removed the gold layer and we will set this up from scratch. So what I'll do is delete everything that's plugged in here. X and we'll start again. All right, so there's a few things that we need. The first thing I've done is exported an image, which you can see here, and we can use this one to mask out any other areas here. So what I can do is go to my folder and drag that in. Now keeping in mind that my UVs have already been set up. So now what I can do is Shift A and we can go UV and I'll plug the UV node into the vector of our image texture. Then I'll click in this here and we'll apply a UV to this. Right now I'm using square texture here and the only reason I'm doing that is for my foil. When I download textures from the internet, they usually come in square seamless patterns. And so I want my textures to be the same so that I don't have to manually resize the foils. For now, what I'm going to do is continue on. So I'll go shift A, we'll search and we'll add an mix shader. We'll drop that here. Now what we need to do is take this one here and plug that straight into our mix shader here. So we've got two. Now this one can go from there. This mix shader can plug into our material output. This will depend on how you've got it set up. I'm not going to go much into over here. Basically, this is just our paper uh, color and our other texture or our label. If you have any questions on that, how to set up a full scene, pop them down below and I'll try to answer them. And I may also do a video in the future. The next, what we can do is plug the color into the factor. Now what's happening is this white and black layer. So what it's telling Blender is anything plugged into shader slot number one will show if the area is black. So our image here is black. So if the area is black, shader slot number one will show. And shader slot number two, if the area is white, then the other side will show. So what we can do now is shift A, add a principled BSDF, you can zoom in and I can just plug this into the bottom slot that's free for now. And what I'm doing is I'll crank up the metallic really high. We'll drop the roughness 
Now I won't go too low, I'll set it somewhere here. And you can see here that we're already getting this foil effect. So what I can do is change the color. Let's change it down here to a gold looking color. And we can tweak this as we like. There's lots of different golds. There's rose golds somewhere up in here. There's light. There's all sorts of different foils. So we can just tweak the color there. But right now it's set up the opposite way around. So what we can do is take this shader here and we'll plug it into the top. That'll switch them. And you can see straight away that we've got our effect. Now you could leave it here if you would like to. However, I go a little bit further by adding paper textures and I'll also use that paper texture to add a little bit of texture to the gold. But let's continue on and we'll do this all under displacement here. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right, so what we can do is in the displacement, we'll add a displacement node. Pop that down there. We'll plug the displacement into the displacement on the material output. Keep going across and I'm going to drop it in a paper texture. Now this paper texture, I want to set the color space to non-color. Then I'll plug the color into the height of the displacement. And you should see straight away that the displacement is working. However, if yours isn't working, then there may still be an option you need to set. But what we can do is go to our material properties here, click on that, scroll down and under settings and under surface, we have an option here. We have displacement and we can say bump only, displacement only, displacement and bump. And so we can choose how we want to do, use this effect. If we want displacement to work properly, then we have to click displacement and bump. Now this will go hectic. So what we can do is two things. Drop the scale, 0 0.01, hit enter. And another thing that we can do is use a color ramp. So what I'll do is pull this aside, shift A, search, color ramp and I'll just hover over this to put the color ramp in between. Now what I want to do is bring the two colors close together. But another thing is the darker the image, the less bump we'll have. So if I can grab this side here, we can either bring it closer, but we want more black in the image. So we'll bring the black closer to the white. You can see there that we've created a mess. So I'm going to take the black back to the start and I'll grab the white and we'll just drop the value on the white using this slider here. You can see here now, we're really starting to get the effects. And the next thing I might wanna do, I'll keep adjusting it just so I can get the best effect. Another thing you can do is actually take the bottom here and lift it up. You can already see something happening to our gold foil effect here. But I want a little bit more control over this. So what I'm going to do is drag this down and I'll hit Shift D, duplicate it. Now what I'm going to do is add a mix node. So we'll search for mix. We'll plug that in between and I'll plug the color into B. Another thing I'll do is grab this one over here, our mask to tell Blender which one we would like to mix. So now what I can do is with this paper texture, I want to flatten this even more. So with these colors, I'm going to look at the values, 0.15. And this one here, we'll look at the value of 0.3. I want to bring this down closer to the 0.15. Now this is creating a little bit of a mess here. Because this is creating a little bit of a mess, one thing I might do is drop it back from displacement and bump to bump only. Now the reason why you may want displacement is if you're having big changes between 
your textures as in you want your texture to be noticeable on the edge like I did a video a couple videos back where I added a texture to the bottle something like this here this is only a bump map but if you want to displace this area a lot more then you would do it there however in this case I think we will only need a bump and in most cases for a gold texture that's going on flat you'll only need a bump so I'm going to continue to work with this now I've got to work out which is which so I'm going to switch these around just to see how this is affected and that's the way I want it so I want this one going into the top and this one going to the bottom so now what we want to do is continue tweaking the values 0.2 We'll go 0.17, hit enter, and I'm just flattening this out so the texture will be really flat. There's a little bit of texture in there, as you can see. Another thing you may see is the height of this. If you don't want as, as deep an indent, another thing I do is just drag this across. I'll go Shift A, and I'll search for a brightness and contrast and I'll drop that in between and what this does is just brightens so if I go 0 0.05 it just changes the level so if I push this extremely high or we go uh, negative one you can see that the level changes between the two so I can continue tweaking this effect if I wanted to I could continue tweaking the color over here another thing I could do is drop the roughness a little bit more something like that but the next thing you want to do with gold is to get some catch lights in it and in this case is a little bit hard to do because catch lights are actually showing in my bottle here and so the best way to combat that would be to light the label separately from the bottle so you have really nice lighting for the bottle and also really nice lighting for the label and then you could either composite that together inside of blender or put it into photoshop and photoshop's a little bit of an easier way to do it with masks you can just paint it out quickly so all i did for the catch lights is i want to place a light where it would reflect back into the camera so right now because of the angle of the bottle this light here if I move it you can see is coming down it's hitting the label and bouncing back into the camera as a reflection so I've got two lights here doing the same thing and so most of the gold effect is actually in the lighting because if I hide these you can see that if I hide the lights that they become very boring so most of the effect for gold is all to do with lighting I'm going to undo that to bring it back and right now I'd be fairly happy with the lighting here and if you wanted to you could continue tweaking this over and over trying to get the perfect gold color somewhere around that obviously the winery bit is extremely tiny and I didn't actually mean to add that into the gold foil but I probably wouldn't do that as gold foil uh, depending on the effect some designers may want it 
And so in here, I'm getting fairly happy with this effect. Maybe just drop the roughness a little bit. Another thing I have done is added in HDRI, which you can just do in here if you click here. You can add in environment texture. And you can get free HDRIs from like, I think Polyhaven have them. I think it used to be called HDRI Haven. But they're free and I just put in like a studio and I dropped it really low. So that just gives a little bit of extra light into the gold so the gold doesn't disappear. So once you're happy with the effect, of course, you can render it out. So that's how I do a gold foil effect inside a blender. If you have any questions, make sure to drop them down below and I'll be sure to answer them or I'll create a video on it to help you out. Also remember to grab that keyboard shortcut cheat sheet to help you out in learning Blender. Until next time, I'll see you later.